Hello and welcome to the screencast session on Kubernetes native API management, GitOps integration with WSO2 API platform on Kubernetes or APK. During this session, we will walk through how WSO2 APK facilitates the integration of GitOps for Kubernetes native API management and the comprehensive steps to seamlessly integrate your API management processes with GitOps workflows using APK and GitHub Actions. My name is Gayangi Seniviratne. I am a software engineer at WSO2 and I will be your host for this session. So imagine you have created a customer API, which is an API that is used to manage the information of your organization's customers. Since you need to ensure that the API functions properly due to standard practices followed in the software development lifecycle, your organization requires that the API be in all three of its environments, development, staging, and production to ensure that the API functions properly. If you try to do this manually and deploy the API separately to each environment, each update to the customer API would need to be manually tracked and deployed across your environments. This process is prone to human error and it leads to inconsistencies that can result in the API behaving unexpectedly in each of the different environments. This will also make collaboration between teams harder and also make recovery from erroneous deployments more difficult. Instead of doing the process manually, we can automate this process using GitOps integration. And GitOps integration is natively supported by the WSO2 APK. Since the APK allows APIs to be created using Kubernetes custom resources, it allows GitOps principles to be used to streamline the deployment and maintenance of the APIs. By providing the open API specification to the APK, you can easily generate the APK conf file, which can be used to generate the custom resources for the API. This can then be applied directly to your Kubernetes environment to create an API thanks to the APK. Now, let's reimagine the previous scenario with the WSO2 APK and GitOps. The code and configurations of the customer API will be stored in a Git repository. You can suggest changes to the configurations or the code stored in the Git repository using a pull request. You can also maintain different branches for different environments that have their own unique configurations for each environment. For example, the development environment can correspond to the dev branch and so on. And this is what I will do in the demo. Once a PR with the new commits has been approved and merged, you can configure a workflow that automatically runs to seamlessly integrate the changes across your environments. This will speed up the development process, ensure consistency and reliability across environments, and make collaboration easier and make rollbacks to previous versions easier as well. Now let's go through the flow of the demo. First, I will install the APK to the dev and stage environments and then enable GitHub Actions for GitOps. Then we will merge two PRs to activate the GitHub Actions and then automatically deploy the APIs to the dev and stage environments. Then we will invoke the APIs in these environments to ensure that the deployment was successful. The prerequisites for this demo are that you need to have the open API specification for the customer API, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster that has been pre-configured and a Git repository to commit the artifacts to. I have already created the custom resources for the customer API and committed them to the Git repository. So now let's start with the demo. Let's first create a dev and a stage namespace in Kubernetes. Now let's proceed with the installation of the APK in both these environments. First, we will add the Helm repo and after updating it, we will proceed to create the values.yml file for the environments. Let's first start with the dev environment. You can verify that your installation is complete by executing a kubectl get pods command. I will now proceed with the installation of the APK for the stage environment. Again, we here use a customized values.yml file for the stage environment.
Now that the APK has been installed to the dev environment and the stage environment, let's now go through the git repository we will be using for this demo. You can find all the materials and the commands I have used throughout this demo in this repository. The customer API that you see in the main branch here is the API we will be using. It contains these YAML files which were generated using the config generator of the APK. These are the artifacts relevant to the customer API. Additionally, this customization file specifies a list of resources that will be used in the Kubernetes manifests. Additionally, notice these two branches, the dev branch and the stage branch. The dev branch corresponds to the dev environment and the stage branch corresponds to the stage environment. The main branch contains the declarative definition of the API, while the dev branch and the stage branches contain the configuration changes unique to that relevant environment. Let's understand how the GitOps integration works in this scenario. I have a workflow file here that is in the stage branch and this workflow file causes a GitHub action to run whenever a pull request is merged into the stage branch. It will check out the main branch and apply the changes in the stage branch on top of it and then deploy that API into the Kubernetes cluster. There is a similar workflow for the dev branch as well. Let's now merge a pull request and see how it works. I have two pull requests here, one that will be merged to the dev branch and the other that will be merged to the stage branch. So let's merge both these pull requests. And you will be able to see the GitHub actions running. Now you can see that the API has been successfully deployed to the Kubernetes cluster. Now that the APIs have been deployed to the dev environment and the stage environment, we can invoke them. First, we shall do this for the dev environment. Let's get the external IP address of the dev environment and then add it to our etc hosts file. Then we can generate a token and invoke the curl command for that API. Since I have already generated a token, I will directly use that token and then invoke the curl command. As you can see, I have successfully received the response from the API deployed to the dev environment. Now we shall proceed to do the same for the stage environment. First, we shall obtain the external IP of the stage environment and then add it to our etc hosts file. Then, similar to before, we can obtain a token and then invoke the curl command for the API in the stage environment. As you can see, I have received the response from the API deployed to the stage environment. In this video, we have explored GitOps integration with the WSO2 APK for Kubernetes native API management. Stay tuned to see more content in the future and thank you for joining.